Okay, welcome to lecture 4.3. In this lecture, we're going to talk about trends in neural activity. So some basic concepts uh, to help you understand um, what neural activity in the brain might mean. The first one is that in your brain, there are maps. There are maps of your body. We call those maps a homunculus. Uh, your motor system has a homunculus and your somatosensory system has a homunculus. They're shown here. Um, you can see that they're essentially, imagine someone um, sitting on the top of the brain and leaning back with their uh, feet sort of hanging over the edge. Uh, notice that the homunculus is deformed. Um, the face is quite large. The lips, while small on our body, are take up a big place of this homunculus. The hand is very big. Um, Whereas an area of your body that's actually quite a bit bigger than your lips or your hands, say your back, is relative receives is is represented in a very small way. So what does this mean? The homunculus tells us how much of the uh, human cortex is dedicated to each part of the body. So you can see here that uh, the amount of cortex dedicated to your face is huge compared to the amount of cortical activity dedicated to the processing of your arm movements, for example. The same is found with somatosensory areas. Things that are very sensitive to touch have more computing power behind them, right? So increased sensitivity results from increased computing power, which results from having more of the brain involved in the process. So you have these homunculuses, homunculi, I guess, uh, they're distorted in a way that's interesting in terms of representation. And they also tell us where on various parts of the brain um, uh, different parts of your body are being processed. So they really are map-like. Another concept that uh, I want to share with you in terms of cortical processing is the idea of a hierarchy. Right? You know a hierarchy. Um, simple, low-level things happen at the bottom of the hier hierarchy, and as you move up the hierarchy, um, things get more complicated or integrated or holistic. Um, and that is that happens in the human brain. There's a cartoon, like on a, a drawing on the left side of your slide here, um, to try to illustrate the following fact. Let's take the visual cortex, the part of your brain that analyzes the visual system. At the beginning, what the visual cortex seems to care about are small little dots of light, just where there is a light. Then color gets added in. Then as you go up the hierarchy, as you go to later and later stages of visual processing, edges are detected. And then um, uh, corners and line endings um, so the processing gets more and more complicated as you go to later and later stages in visual processing, which is another way of saying going up the hierarchy. So at the bottom level of the hierarchy, processing is detail-oriented, very small, local processing. And then as you go up the hierarchy, the neurons that are there do more global or holistic processing. That's hierarchical processing. A great example of this is the Nobel Prize winning research by David Hubel and Torsten Wiesel on the visual system of the cat. So what these two researchers did was to record um, basically with the, what makes a cell in the cat visual cortex fire, right? What makes a cell active or responsive? Um, they tried all sorts of things to get a cat it's just neurons in the cat brain to respond, um, and nothing happened. They turn on lights, they turn off lights, nothing happened. Uh, but when they moved a bar of light through a scene, they happened upon a cell that responded strongly. And uh, that result led to the creation of their model of visual processing, which is very hierarchical. So in the first step of their model, the visual, the the cells in those areas look for essentially uh, donuts and donut holes of light. Okay, it's called a center surround receptive field. Some cells like light right in the middle, but not in the surround. Other cells like light in the surround, but not in the middle. I call them donut and donut holes, probably because I was hungry one morning when I did it. 
But at low level, uh, low levels of visual system processing, you get those little dots. Then as you go up to the next stage, you get what uh, Hubel and Wiesel called simple cells, which are cells that care about stationary bars of light. And they propose that these bars of light, the sensitivity to bars of light, was created by input from lots of lower level cells that just cared about those donut and donut holes. If you can imagine lining up a set of donuts, you can draw a bar with the holes in those donuts, right? And that's essentially what this cartoon is. Imagine lower level cells that have receptive fields that are centered surround. The right combination of receptive fields is combined over space, then you're gonna create a cell that cares about a bar of light that falls, say, right on the line of donut holes that you've created. They called those simple cells. Here's a stimulus from their study. They proposed a next layer that this, you have those simple center surround cells that feed up to simple cells. Simple cells feed up to what they called hyper complex cells, which were combinations of simple cells that responded maximally to a higher level cell that took input from all of those simple cells such that that cell responded most to a moving bar of line. Bar of line, wow. So that that cell responded most to a moving bar of light. Um, so this was, I said hypercomplex, I'm sorry. These are complex cells. Hypercomplex cells are, are the next stage. So I just want you to get the idea of a hierarchy, higher and higher levels of processing. First, you start out with sensitivity to little dots, then those cells, the cells that analyze little dots of light, feed up to higher level cells that are sensitive to bars of light, and those cells feed up into higher level processes that care about moving bars of light, and higher and higher and higher. So your brain extrudes or, or computes equally increasingly complex information as you go up the brain, as you go to later and later stages of processing. Later stages means more complex analyses. Your brain also has pathways, or since we're in Los Angeles, let's talk about freeways, where um, certain kinds of information seem to be fast-tracked. And two big freeways in the um, human visual system, actually the primate visual system, are called the dorsal and ventral system. Ventral just means from your stomach, right? And dorsal, it's like a dorsal fin, it's on the back. So the ventral uh, um, processing stream runs down towards the front of you, and the dorsal runs up towards where a dorsal fin would be, the back of you. Um, people argue about what exactly those two freeways or pathways do. Um, for a long time, the idea that was that one pathway processed what an object was, so trying to identify um, this as a pen and making that different from this being a credit card, what an object is, um, versus uh, another pathway which processed where things were in space. Um, anyway, doesn't matter here. What I want you to get here is that there are freeways, processing freeways in your brain.